Hi, I am Basil Assaf and welcome back to Pathology Dynamics. Today we will talk about Rift Valley Fever. Rift Valley Fever is a negative sense single-stranded RNA virus that belongs to the genus Flipovirus, which belongs to the family Bunyaviridae. Rift Valley Fever was first described in Kenya in the East African Rift, and that's where the virus and the disease got their name. The disease hence is confined to Africa and multiple countries in the Middle East. The disease occur in sheep goat, cattle, and camels, as well as in humans, and hence it's a zoonotic disease. Rift Valley Fever virus is transmitted mainly by mosquitoes, particularly the Aedes and Culex species. The virus transmits vertically from the mosquitoes to the eggs and can remain viable for years. Mosquitoes lay eggs in water to hatch, and that's why rain and water increase the spread of disease. The disease can also be transmitted by infected blood or air around butchered animals or a aborted fetuses and fetal membranes. However, the virus cannot transmit from one human to another. The most significant clinical outcome of this disease is abortion storm, neonatal mortality, and areas of hemorrhage and necrosis in multiple organs, especially the liver and the gastrointestinal tract. This is a freely accessible, great review if you are interested in learning more details about the disease pathogenesis, and I will put the link for it in the description box. In this sheep's liver, we can see that the liver is pale yellow with scattered one to two millimeter areas of necrosis. We can see these areas of necrosis on the cut surface here. And in this cow's colon, we can see multifocal areas of serosal hemorrhages. And in the upmesome, the mucosa is modeled with widespread hemorrhages. I will not spend too much time on liver histology and will encourage you to watch the copper toxicity video for more histology details using the suggested link in the upper right corner. But briefly, liver is composed of multiple lobules. Each lobule is composed of cords of hepatocytes with central vein and portal triads. And this is closer magnification of the portal triads, central vein, and cords of hepatocytes. On histopathology, liver architecture is massively disrupted by multifocal areas of degeneration and lytic necrosis. At higher magnification, we can see dissociation of hepatic cords and individual Individualization of hepatocytes, loss of many hepatocytes due to degeneration and necrosis, and the replacement of tissue by cellular and karyorectic debris. At a higher magnification, we can see the nuclei of some hepatocytes containing 5 to 8 micron in diameter eosinophilic intranuclear viral inclusion bodies that peripheralizes the chromatin. The inclusion bodies in this viral infection is not as easy to identify as Negri bodies with rabies disease or the ones we saw with canine distemper. However, if you compare the nuclei of these degenerate hepatocytes with the nuclei of these hepatocytes, you can notice the difference in the center of the nucleus. In this case as well, the connective tissue surrounding gallbladder is loosely arranged and widespread due to edema. Keep in mind that except for the inclusion bodies, massive hepatic necrosis can occur due to other diseases such as aflatoxins, blue-green algae, or copper poisoning, for example. I hope you found this video informative. And as always, many thanks to the Joint Pathology Center for making these slide scans available. If you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure you view the previous videos as well. And don't forget to spread the knowledge by sharing this video with friends and colleagues who may find it useful. And please subscribe to the channel so you can receive all the new videos. Thank you very much.